Welcome back to my messy workshop. You're always more than welcome. And I have got a new lathe. So unfortunately, my clock metal worker lathe, AKA Derek, uh, sadly just broke. And uh, I, I ended up selling him for spare parts to a friend of mine uh, who has subsequently got Derek working again. So Derek is has moved on to a better place and is now living a second life. But let me introduce you to my new little beastie. It's an MX600A, uh, which I bought off of Amazon from a company called Orion Motor Tech. Uh, but I've decided to christen this baby Megan because getting her to the workshop and setting everything up has been a royal pain in the butt. But I think we've got Megan dialed in. And so for this video, um, I just want to play around uh, and just make something for fun, you know? Um, so I've got this bit of titanium. Uh, it's already sort of pre-drilled quite a bit. Um, so just maybe make like a, qu a quick little project. Um, I don't know, this, get it in the chuck, do some drilling uh, and just see where we go. Let's have some fun. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this hammered, anodized titanium ring. So I started out with a piece of uh, grade 5 titanium, uh, got it in the chuck and just got ready to do some drilling. I'd already drilled uh, about a 15 mil hole in this piece of titanium anyway. Uh, so I just went ahead and uh, drilled through the titanium with an 18 mil drill bit uh, and then a 20 mil drill bit. Just making sure to use lots of uh, cutting oil just to you know, help dissipate some of the heat as I was drilling the titanium. Um, and. I've got to be honest, I'm absolutely loving this new lathe. Um, it's just got plenty of power. And even though I'm not the best person ever at um, sharpening drill bits, you know, the lathe made really quick work of drilling the hole. Uh, and another cool thing that uh, I set up on this lathe is a quick change tool post. I feel like a lot of the time when you're, uh, you know, making rings or doing machining, on a metal lathe, you spend a lot of time just changing tools. <laughs> uh, so the quick change tool post was a really uh, good addition to this little lathe. Cost a bit of extra money and it was a bit of a pain to uh, install, but we got there in the end. So the next job was to install a parting off tool or a grooving tool uh, to cut out my ring blank essentially. Um, and again, this lathe just makes easy work of tasks like this, as it's lovely and sturdy, and uh, the parting off tool was nice and sharp. So with the ring parted off, it was then time to put a nice shape uh, and surface finish uh, on the ring blank. Um, so I started out by uh, using the boring tool. And I found that uh, using a, a fast, relatively fast spindle speed of around six to 700 RPM um, and a slow feed rate with a sharp carbide cutting tool really leaves a nice finish on uh, titanium or stainless steel. Um, and so I went through and did a few passes with the boring tool. I was never able to do this on my old lathe. So I've got to be honest, this is probably the most satisfying part of the process for me. <laughs> I wasn't really too worried about the inside diameter of the ring. I was literally just doing this for a bit of fun. So, I mean, I would have been a lot more precise if I was sort of getting it to a really precise size. Uh, but anyway, um, I used a just a standard carbide cutter turned on the side then to chamfer the inside edges of the ring. Which again, uh, brought a really nice finish um, and then uh, I set up one of the expanding ring mandrels from ringsupplies.com uh, to hold the ring uh, while I worked on the outside. And so again, uh, with a spindle speed, about 600-700 RPM, slow feed rate, 
sharp carbide tool, a bit of cutting oil. Um, I just took a few passes just to kind of slim the ring down a little bit. And I'm really happy with the surface finish I got on the titanium there. Which, I mean, wasn't really essential <laughs> for this project. Uh, but, you know, it's always cool to, you know, be able to reduce the amount of uh, polishing you need to do at the later stage. So, yeah, really happy with the surface finish on that one. Um, and then I just used the same uh, carbide cutter to chamfer the outside edges of the ring as well, just to give it a little bit of shape. And with all the shaping uh, done, really happy with how that turned out. I mean, you could probably just polish that up uh, and call it a day, uh, but I was feeling gnarly. I'm really getting into kind of hammered, battle-torn looking rings at the moment. Um, and so I used a few uh, planishing hammers um, and just went over and essentially just beat the outside of the ring uh, with all different sides of the hammer to kind of play with texture and create various different marks. And I've, I've got to be honest, I, I would have just left it there. I thought it looked really cool, just, you know, hammered, just bashed up. Uh, but then I went over, uh, put the ring into a finger saver, which I got from uh, Bentwood Ring Supplies on Instagram. Uh, I'll put a link to these in the description, because I get asked about these all the time. Uh, but yeah, I just went over with a few grits of sandpaper just to polish up the inside uh, and put an extra bit of chamfer on that inside edge. And then I used a rotary tool with uh, just a, a cotton buffing wheel um, and just a green polishing compound to bring that ring to a really lovely shine. And hey, I was literally ready to leave it there, but I thought uh, I wanted to play with some, just play with some anodizing to put some color on it. Um, so I set up my ghetto anodizer station, which comprised of three 9 volt batteries, um, a fork, <laughs> and uh, a bit of titanium wire. Uh, but basically, I anodized uh, the ring with three batteries first which kind of brought it to kind of like a, a bluey purple I thought it was a really cool color uh, this is the color which I initially wanted so I was really happy with that and then I took some 1200 grit sandpaper um, and just roughed up the outside edge um, so that the all of the raised areas of that hammered texture would kind of go back to bare titanium. And then I took two of the batteries away and just went to one nine volt battery um, and anodized it again, because that second uh, anodizing wouldn't affect the purple color. It would only affect like the bare titanium uh, because it's got less volts. Um, and I mean, it looked kind of cool, but I wanted more contrast. I wanted more, more gold. Uh, kind of webbing look uh, on the outside of the ring. So I kind of went back over and um, I anodized the whole ring up with four batteries, which turned it to like a blue color, sanded off the outside, uh, and then anodized it again with one battery to get that gold webbing. And yeah, what do you guys think of that? All right, that's the end of the video. Megan absolutely smashed it. I really enjoyed making that bashed up titanium ring. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Um, I don't know. Subscribe. If you if you like the content, then subscribe. Um, and there's like links in the description to uh, join my my mailing list where you get a bunch of free stuff about making rings. So yeah, check that out, and I'll see you in the next one. Whoosh.